Let's take a lesson from both Chick Corea and the tenor saxophonist John Coltrane. I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com. Thanks for being here for my journey through the real book. This is the 75th video installment in this series. Um, I've numbered every tune in the real book, and there's 400 total. So it's going to be 400 weeks to finish this, which is great. I gave myself a project for what uh, eight years. And uh, hopefully you too to really uh, take you through this and to uh, give you a little history, background, and practice suggestions for the tunes and hopefully inspiration. So um, the 75th tune is John Coltrane's Countdown. And it's based on the Miles Davis tune, Tune Up, which uh, Coltrane recorded as a member of Miles Davis Quintet in the 60s, uh, 50s rather, the first great quintet, not the one in the 60s with Wayne Shorter. So um, if you don't know those albums yet, My Funny Valentine, um, um, even um, uh, uh, Kind of Blue with the uh, Sextet, um, Walk In, Steam In, um, great, great a series of albums for about five years, six years. So what he did was, uh, Col uh, Tune Up had a series of two five ones. The first one was in D, and then down a step in C, and then in B flat, and then a little last four measures, that wasn't a 251. So what Coltrane did was he was playing the Richard Rogers tune, um, Have You Met Miss Jones, and he realized that the chords in the bridge um, tonicized or did a 251 in keys that were related by thirds, related by thirds. So he did that. He said, okay, I'm going to start on the two chord in D, which is E minor, and instead of just going to the five chord, A, and then to D, which would have sounded like this. I'm going to start on E minor, then I'm going to do a 2-5 in B flat, and then a 2-5 in G flat, and then finally do the 5-1 in D. So it's sort of like walking to the store and back home, but you're going to stop at the post office and then stop at the bank, finally get to the store, come back home. So it's a circuitous route to get back home from that two chord to the five, which points you back one, being a dominant tonic relationship. So you get these uh, chords, these uh, very convoluted but fun uh, and colorful ways to do two five one. So you have it in D, and then in C, then in B flat. did the same four chords at the end that Miles had used. And uh, incidentally, this isn't the only Miles Davis tune that he recorded with his own group. Um, uh, so What was another one, but he wrote another melody to it and called it Impressions. So he was very influenced by that music. Um, here's where the Chick Corea part comes in. This is done at light speed, and, and the melody doesn't, the chords work slower. slower, but the melody doesn't. I guess it would, but Coltrane really played it. So I've always taken it as a challenge just to really learn how to play it that fast and to think. It's, it's actually harder to think through these changes than it is to move your fingers. I mean, if you play Bach, you know, you, you can play that fast but it's to think through these changes and find some of the common tones, like he does in the melody. Right? This nice little melody that just goes up stepwise, up and down, like a little waveform through these very convoluted chord changes. That's the hard part. Chick Corea once said in an article for Keyboard Magazine from the um, 70s, it was called Contemporary Keyboard Magazine when I first started getting it, um, that um, uh, the way to practice fast, to play fast, is to practice slow. So I have played tunes like this many, many, many hours with the metronome on like 40, literally going.
just, I'm not even trying to get faster. And then I would put it to 42, and then 44, then 46, and then I'd get up to um, 80, and then I'd put the metronome, uh, then I'd, I'd play, at, you know, uh, go back to 40, but have it, you know, sort of twice as, every two beats. So um, working my way up very, very slowly, and over time, you can play it fast. <laughs> That's the thing. Slow practice leads to fast playing. Um, let's see where this takes me. I, I just, this is sort of like, I think it's called countdown because it's like, you know, getting on a roller coaster or a spaceship where you're like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Hold on. Fasten your seatbelt. Here we go.
John Coltrane is, it's like climbing Mount Everest for musicians. That's really what it is. It's a challenge, long-term challenge to prepare for it. And like I said before, practice slowly, really learn these Coltrane changes. And then, uh, as they say in Star Wars, may the force be with you. Good luck with your jazz piano.